Good morning and welcome to this um, executive member decision session. Um, uh, my name is Councillor Katie Lomas. Uh, this is my executive um, decision session. However, Councillor Claire Douglas, the council leader, is in consultation on this matter. Uh, it's great to see so many people here. I think it's a wonderful reflection of how important the Civic Party is in the civic life of our wonderful city. Um, so it's absolutely a delight to have you all here um, and um, to see some, some faces that I haven't seen for, for quite some time. I'm going to start um, the agenda with uh, declarations of interest. Um, any declarations of interest? No. And then we'll move swiftly on to public participation. We have 10 public speakers um, this morning, which again is wonderful um, and I'm grateful for all the interest in this matter. Each public speaker will have three minutes um, and I will offer you all the opportunity to have a 30 second warning when you've only got 30 seconds left. You can decline that if you wish. Um, I will ask you to come to a close after three minutes um, because it's really important that everyone has a fair opportunity to speak this morning. Um, we have two speakers who are joining us remotely and the rest are in the room. So I'm going to start with Councillor Mason, who joins us remotely. Have we got you, Councillor Mason? Uh, yeah, I'm here, Chair. Brilliant. You have three minutes. Would you like me to give you a 30 second warning? Uh, it should be OK. Thank you. Great. I shall let you get on with it. Super. Uh, I'm deeply concerned by this paper. Uh, which ensures that events will be undertaken by the Civic Party at their own expense and with no Civic Support Officer. As a disabled person, the Civic Officers were vital to enabling me to function at my best, helping me find key people in a crowded room, uh, describing who was at an event and finding a large print order of service. On three occasions as Sheriff, my personal safety was placed at risk, uh, one where the police had to be called. The report makes no mention of personal safety. Uh, reflecting on the use of the 12-year-old Civic car, uh, I think again it's failed to take into account people like me that can't drive or might struggle to use public transport. Uh, it would have been impossible for me to have undertaken the role without the car. Um, and I was surprised that there's no uh, detailed equalities impact assessment with this paper. Uh, any member should be able to be Lord Mayor. It's the reason when we refurb the Mansion House, we put an accessible uh, bathroom in uh, and a lift to the top floor so everyone could, could be uh, a Lord Mayor. Um, and obviously people understand the whole thing about the landlord living above the pub. I think it's important to understand that the flat's a working space and it has great potential to be a working space and it's not a grand second home. Uh, charity fundraising it has been um, something for years CYC haven't wanted to be involved with. Uh, and obviously it's important the Civic Party can pick their own charity and rally people around that will actually make that effective. Obviously if we use the community fund then you know who's going to do the legwork, leg work, raffle tickets, selling uh, uh, events, all of that type of thing. Uh, again, as a young person, I think it's important we reflect that there is a cost in being a member of the Civic Party and obviously cutting the allowance will uh, reduce who can afford to do it. Uh, it's interesting that the Mayor of Filey is now going to have a bigger allowance than the Lord Mayor of York, which I think you know just puts it into comparison that there is a huge cost in doing this that we need to reflect on the people that are doing the job. Uh, there's lots of people going about. Obviously, there's only three councillors on CYC that have done the Civic roles and um, none of us were consulted in this. Obviously, the Civic Party elect are but clearly they're people that at present nobody knows the identity of uh, publicly. Uh, I think, again, for this paper to spark the debate on the Today programme shows its importance. You know, Nick, Nick Robinson describes York as a great city with a great history. And I suppose my concern is, does this paper and do the ambitions of the current administration live up to that and the potential that we've got to, to lever that power? Uh, to quote the former council leader, Daph Williams, I did at annual council last time, I've always been cynical of the position as a politician until I did the role. Actually, there's great power in going along to events to say thank you to people who are doing what they're doing, to celebrate the many successes of things going on around the city uh, and having someone to come along on behalf of the city to say well done and thank you for what you're doing. There's real power in that and it's something that uh, all of us in public life should choose to celebrate. Uh, budget savings can be made. I think there's no doubt there. But I think stopping a charity volunteer, school child, being able to meet their Lord Mayor, wearing the chains just is a step too far. Uh, I think please put this decision off. Let's all have some good consultation. There's plenty of people interested and let's make a, a consensus we can all agree with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. That was spot on uh, three minutes. Our next public speaker also joining us remotely is Danielle Mason. Do we have you with us, Danielle? Yeah, I'm here. Brilliant. You have three minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Um, I should be OK, I think. Oh, brilliant. <clears throat> 
go ahead when you're ready. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share my experience of being a woman in my 20s, taking on the role of Sheriff's Lady and what your proposed changes will have meant for me. During my civic year, I still worked full-time shifts and I was lucky to have some flexibility from my employer. However, being able to be picked up and dropped off at work for engagements minimised time away from work and allowed me to play a full active part. Having to travel on public transport would dramatically increase travel time and mean I would have had to take unpaid time off work, which I wouldn't have been able to afford, reducing my ability to support events. If you really want an inclusive approach, then you must consider the impacts on younger people taking on these roles. Regarding wearing the chains, this is a vi- this is vital. When I wore them, other young people would come up to me, talk to me. Being their age helped break down barriers. The chain is a talking point and often leads to great interactions. The chain is the symbol of the office and there <clears throat> and there to identify. and to ser- to wear when serving as a civic party. I was disappointed to hear the comments of lavish receptions. I'm not sure having takeaway pizza with children in care or pastries and tea with the bin men was seen to them or to the citizens of York as lavish. I was proud during my year to host events <clears throat> at the Mansion House that celebrated volunteers and community leaders. For some of these, we even went to Aldi and purchased the wine ourselves and we got beer donated from Brew York, all of which we served ourselves to guests to deliver events on the shoestring on a shoestring. If we cannot give hard working volunteers in our city an invite to the mansion house and a cup of tea to thank, say thank you, then what can we do? Please <clears throat> please don't underestimate the value of the civics party's attendance made to people we met at over three hundred events you don't list. Visit to schools, place of worship, community groups, they were, they were all important. It's hard to describe unless you've experienced it yourself. There is a buzz of positivity, add specialness. Many people will never meet a royal and MP, the leader of the council, and meeting a member of the civic party to them has great value and is often a memory of the treasure. Having to reduce these visits and turning up with a badge the size of a one pound coin would hugely devalue the recognition the civic party brings to groups and individuals. Please let's look again at how we support York, York civic life and ensure it is attainable for all and citizens feel it's unique and a special impact to them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danielle. Um, our next speaker is Philippa Crowther. You have three minutes to speak. Would you like a 30 second warning? Brilliant. Off you go. Good morning. My name is uh, Philippa Crowther. I'm the chief executive of one of York's oldest charities, the Wilberforce Trust. The trustees would like me to, to express that we are not affiliated to any political party. I stand here and sit here today as a charity leader. The charity sector, third sector, plays a pivotal role in York in the provision of support and services filling many gaps in society not funded or funded adequately through local authority government funding. It is dismaying to see that the council have not carried out any consultation with the third sector regarding the choice and diverting publicly funds away from um, the, the, the charity sector. In, in essence, it means that the local authority are dictating where publicly people can, can put their monies. Um, we're simply being told that they'll be raising funds for the York Community Fund, and that priority is for free school dinners in York. Whilst we all believe children should have a free school meal, is this not a local authority budget responsibility? As a recipient of the Lord Mayor's charity fundraising some years ago, blind and partially sighted people benefited in York from the sheer hard work from the Lord Mayor and Civic Party. Having the opportunity for the blind people to play a part with the Lord Mayor and Civic Party was measurable. They were able to articulate the feel of the chains of office and what the Lord Mayor work was doing for them, including those with other disabilities in York. It raised our profile alongside those other chosen charities in the city with future volunteers, donors and supporters, which would not have been the case had the Lord Mayor not had the ability to choose our charity. Mm-hmm. Indeed, through this funding and other donations and in partnership with the York College, 
We've been able to fulfil buying raised beds to allow blind and partially sighted people the chance to sow, grow and eat their own produce, attend cooking classes to learn the skill of simply cooking for themselves rather than always relying on paid care and support hours to do it for them. This action by the local authority will erode the already difficult conditions the charity sector faces in York. It is underestimated how small essential charities depend heavily on the ability to raise their profile and good causes through the Lord Mayor's role in raising what could be in many cases essential funding. Public donations are choice. People choose to give hard-earned money to the charities whom they feel connected to. Those charities whom they may not have known could help them in the future if it were not through the Lord Mayor's selection. To ask people to donate to a local authority choice for what may well be seen as a statutory and moral service may well reduce charitable give overall in the city. This action does the charity sector and the people of York a major disservice and demonstrates the lack of knowledge of the work, its value and the need of the third sector in this city. I would strongly urge the local authority to review this at the same time of, gaining, three minutes up. of gaining more understanding of our role. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just ask everyone in the in the uh, public gallery to make sure all phones are turned on to silent, please? Um, and I assure you, Philippa, that we we did we did hear everything that you had to say, despite the slight interruption. Um, I'm certain that officers will be able to clarify. I think there's been some misunderstanding of what's happening with the charity fund, and I'm sure that officers will be able to respond to that and clarify that when they give their input. Um, I think it's really important for the public to understand that the York Community Fund is completely separate from the York Hungry Minds Fund, which is the charity vehicle for free school meals. The York Community Fund is completely different. And the intention here is for the Lord Mayor and the Civic Party to be able to um, make requests of the York Community Fund as to where their charitable um, donations will go, so which charities they're going to support in exactly the same way they have done over recent years. Um, this is just a vehicle for managing their donations and making sure um, that all of the responsibility is taken away from the Civic Party of actually handling the money. Um, so I think that officers will definitely be able to clarify that, but I didn't want there to be any misunderstanding on it. I think that'd be good. We'll move on. Better. We'll move on to our next public speaker, Janet Looker. I will do my best with three minutes, but you know me. I'm so, appalling at keeping time. So, Janet, so, I will I will give you a 30-second warning. You give just... me plenty, plenty of warning. <laughs> Can I say that the first thing is, one, I do come to this with significant experience. Uniquely in this company here, I have been Lord Mayor three times. Once in 0405, when I was very new and very unfamiliar with what to do, and again, just a few years ago, um, as we plunged into the pandemic. So I know what I'm talking about, and I welcome this paper enormously. I have to say that from the very beginning, when I was doing the Lord Mayor down back in 04, my main complaint was that there was no focus. You have these core functions, yes, but who was to choose whether you were going to the John Smith race day on such and such um, an occasion, or whether you were going to something else, there was no, there was no overarching focus. And I think this review will uh, start to put a framework around which Lord Mayors can work, because you're always reacting. You're reacting to people's requests, and okay, lots of them are real fun. But is that the best way to exploit what is a hugely important and significant office, which should be working for the benefit of the city? And I can see opportunities to talking with Make It York, the York Bid, 
and the council and perhaps and some of the significant voluntary networks to try and pull together a really good coherent plan for what the Lord Mayor should do. It would give us a structure. We dive in as if we're going into a swimming pool and we don't quite know how to swim. You do sink or swim. I hope most of us swam, but it was challenging. So I welcome the review and the opportunity to fit the um to fit the role of the Lord Mayor more, more acutely with the needs of the city. But I also welcome the review because I think in times of appalling austerity, when budgets are being cut in all directions, the Civic Party has to make their contribution. And it may not look an awful lot, um, but seconds. heavens above, it's, it's needed and it is a gesture. And I suspect there are more savings in there than we expect when we go into what you should wear and who you should be escorted with. Can I just finally say on the charities that I have used what is it was called the two ridings. I used them twice. Nobody had any problem donating to it once they worked out what they were. Um, and I mean, three the minutes. T-shirt, which tells you. Um, that's and your three minutes. Janet. I'm going to give you myself another 30 seconds just to say. No, I'm that afraid they were that wonderful. you can't have a, another 30 seconds. That's your three minutes. Thank I've you very much. I've got an idea for the badge. Marvelous. I'll tell I'm you. I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll be able to pass that on to, to us afterwards. Thank you very <laughs> much for your contribution. Um our next speaker is Councillor Oral. Councillor Oral, you have three minutes. Would you like a 30-second warning? Marvellous. Off you go. Good morning. Uh, a highly excited Fred got out of the flight simulator. This followed a tour of the base, including climbing into planes, helicopters, fire engines. Fred had been told he would eventually go blind. He wanted to do as many experiences as he could before then. And Fred came to the mansion house and was fascinated with its history and loved DM1. Linton is now closed, but special visits for people with disabilities wouldn't be able to happen under these proposals. Then there was a the Lord Mayor, along with his sheriff, who visited all our primary schools. This was in full regalia. A badge wouldn't quite have had the impact that roads and chains did. The importance he placed on the morality and the, managed, and the mansion house was demonstrated by the fact that he became a mansion house guide. And he was a fiercely loyal Labour councillor. Children get so much out of mayoral visits with spin-offs into many historical aspects and they understand why our city is so special. Very disappointingly, there's been no consultation, particularly with the people who had actually given insight into the civic role, the past sheriffs and Lord Mayors. No consultation, so the understanding of the hundreds of community events attended by the city party is flawed. No consultation, so no recognition of the events with all the faith groups that helped to harmonize and integrate our many communities. No consultation, so a lack of understanding of the difference between the highly party political role of the coming mayor of York and North Yorkshire and the non-political ambassadorial role of York's historic civic party. People from around the world coming to see the Lord Mayor of York in the mansion house want someone independent of party who encompasses the history and traditions of our city. It will be a sad day for York if the proposals in the report were actually put into effect. They would undermine the, its historic role and the work for our communities. But over 800 years, the mayorality has had many ups and downs, this, so this would no doubt be a blip that would eventually be reversed. But much better if that didn't happen. So please follow the logic of the report and maintain its traditional role 
loved by so many people across the city. Thank you, Councillor Earl. Councillor Cullewell is our next speaker. As you know, you have three minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Uh, no, I'll try to keep within the three minutes. Marvellous, thank you. So, good morning. And Councillor Lomas, I think the sensible and pragmatic decision today would be to defer this key decision to be considered along with the forthcoming options around the Mansion House and the Civic Car, and therefore to allow appropriate opportunity for representations and consultation, which clearly this is not the place for that. A report reviewing the roles, protocols, support and funding for civic responsibilities is a key decision. And it's essential in the light of financial constraints, and particularly with regard to the forthcoming election of a mayor for the combined authorities of York and North Yorkshire, which calls for a fresh clarification of roles and responsibilities. But unfortunately, this report doesn't tick any of these boxes. It's littered with inaccuracies, omissions, and unworkable solutions. The main reason for that is clearly found at 42, consultation analysis, none. Produced with zero consultation, no consultation with the current civic party, nor any who served in the roles in the past. Especially concerning when the current administration contains not a single member who has lived experience of civic responsibilities. No consultation with those directly supporting the civic role. No consultation with other political groups on the council. Given the role of Lord Mayor and civic party must stand outside of party politics and represent the whole of the council in the city and beyond, this is a serious oversight. No consultation with other civic bodies or interested parties. Lord Mayor holds a considerable portfolio of responsibilities to other organisations in the city and beyond. By custom and by virtue of the position as Lord Mayor, and not one of these has been consulted. No consultation with other stakeholders, with charities, with schools, youth organisations, the Rotary, veterans organisations, with care homes, with parish councils. No consultation with the people of York. Even the blunt assertion that the elected mayor of York and North Yorkshire, still to come, will take the full responsibilities towards, quote, supporting York as a business and tourism destination, has failed to consult even with our own officers responsible for such things. It certainly cannot have consulted with the not yet elected mayor. The historic links between the city of York and the city of London, the only two cities in England where the right honourable Lord Mayor illustrate the quintessential and unique culture and history of the civic role, which can open doors in a way no other can. One of the lauded benefits of the retention of unitary authority status for the city of York was that it would maintain its civic institutions, unlike so many other places in the region where the morality survives now only as a token charter mayor. I would welcome a report that has consulted meaningfully, a report reflecting the views of all stakeholders, one that carries cross-party support with recommendations that will serve future civic parties and serve the city well. This is not that report. I urge you, please, defer, allow proper consultation, and then we can move on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kulwick, for your contribution. Our next um, speaker is Gwen Swinburne. Gwen, you have three minutes. Would you like a 30-second warning? Marvellous. Oh, thank you. I'm the time. Um, Chair, I have for years been asking for transparent accountability of both the Civic Office and the Mansion House, asking repeatedly to no avail for a Civic Committee or Subcommittee to democratically and transparently oversee these functions, not staff controlling all behind closed doors. I welcome democratization, regularization and tightening of this function, but not this way. It is a not fit for purpose report that has not been consulted. No engagement with our honorary aldermen, other civic party members, our councillors, the civic trust or guilds or the Lord Lieutenant, opposition members and definitely not us pesky customers. I note that only broad, the only broad principles consultee, the incoming Lord Mayor's comments have not been shared. Councillor Lomas, you are the executive with, with responsibility for equalities, yet you accept a report that so plainly does not address any equalities impacts, um, excuse me, uh, particularly on the future of the Lord Mayors and civic parties who are mobility impaired 
or who are not well off, or who live in outer villages. It's inexplicable. Neither does it address the impacts on charities not chosen by you or your party. But because of these, but sorry, but most of all, this is a, an administratively a key decision by law, and it is a decision you should not be making. The budget cut is significant, despite the report inexplicably not sharing the costs of the civic party. The cuts must be 20 to 50 percent of the budget, a key decision. More significant is the reduction and change in importance or direction in the civic function. It affects the whole city. But that's not all. The ban on living in the mansion house, plus the ban on official international and national travel, will mean that the constitution will need to be rewritten to, to delete the residency requirements and the international ambassadorial functions. Without rationale, you are forcing any charity raising to, uh, any charity raising to go to the charity you are to dictate. It's unnecessarily authoritarian and dictatorial and unfair. Councillor Lomas, what should have happened was a proper consultation with all interested parties on the future role of the Lord Mayor, funding options to achieve those aims, with a key decision report to full executive, not this. Please defer this job until, until it can be done properly, with pro uh, professionally and with proper engagement with the community. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Um, and I'm, I'm certain that many of those issues will be addressed by officers um, when they speak. I want to reiterate again that the um, Civic Party will absolutely be able to choose which charities are beneficiaries of the funds that they raise. We are simply regularising the vehicle for the money um, so that we don't have a situation where individuals making up the Civic Party um, are responsible for um, holding funds. Um, I'm going to move on to the next public speaker, Brian Watson. Brian, you have three minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Is that before the three minutes or after? Before. Oh. <laughs> Possibly then, yeah, I might need. I'll, I'll try to do it so it doesn't interrupt you. Okay, thank you. The roles of the Lord Mayor and the Sheriff are one of the most valuable things in York to many organisations varying from preschool nurseries up to 100-year birthday parties, sometimes even more. I received a telephone call last night that I had the support of the once-seen theatre company, a small but active theatre group of members with various degrees of handicap. You probably have never heard of them, but they have heard of the Lord Mayor. The civics travel the city, the county, the country, and even visits abroad to promote our city and build international relationships. Their value is beyond monetary terms, yet you seem to have total disregard for all of this. Historically, they are living contact with the past. They bring it to life quite often when going about their daily duties. I say daily simply because it's a fact. The positions are taken on with the knowledge it is a seven-day-a-week role and not an easy one. From ad-lib speeches to researching your guests, it can be hard, but the satisfaction of knowing you are doing good, to say the least, clearly outweighs the effort. Sadly, this paper in front of us today is an embarrassment to whoever wrote it at your request. I say your request because this attitude has been relevant from day one of your administration. Take a couple of points out of this paper. The point that the robes are expensive to repair. Can I suggest that you investigate this thoroughly? The price of the new one, yes. If that lasts as long as the previous, then it's small pickings. And the point of not living in the mansion house. It is a home of the Lord Mayor for that particular year. In case you haven't noticed, there is a large plaque on the outside wall that tells you. So will you remove that after this budget? If it's been madly maintained, then it's partly the party's fault for not keeping an eye on what's going on, much like you've never questioned the details on Guildhall contracts, and now that's costing you thousands to hire a place for meetings. The lift, not too recently installed to fire rakes, is 50% of the time out of order, and nobody seems to trust the Lord Mayor with a facility to enter or exit the building from the doors. So why not replace the old type fire escape by the side of the lift? 30 seconds. But that's maybe not a simple answer. 
So you want to enable any council member to take on the road, so you decrease the allowances. You want them to, to pay their own travel expenses, but you don't want them going out in the road or when in the change. You want them to travel by bus, so anyone can afford that, can they? Or is it a benefit to be old enough to have a bus pass? Maybe another point to put in your protocol. The proof of the idea, these ideas working is relevant That's in the your fact three minutes. it has taken you longer to announce the law, Mayor and Sheriff, That's than any three party minutes. in the oh. memory. Thank you very much, Brian. I'm sure many of those points will be addressed by officers yeah. um, when they I, speak later. I'm sorry if I sounded a bit blunt, but that's absolutely the topic fine. Is very close to my heart. That's fine, Brian. Right. Um, we've had many open and honest conversations about this, and it's always gratefully received. Sure. Our next speaker is Verna Campbell. Verna, yeah. you have three minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Um, no, thank you. Marvelous. Off you go. I, I don't want to be rude to people here, but this paper does display extraordinary ignorance of the role of the Lord Mayor and the Civic Party. I was sheriff in 2018 to 2019 and obviously enjoyed the pomp and ceremony that goes with that role. But the best part of it is actually the community events. And these are the ones that are going to disappear. There's no way you can get to the uh, old people's home in Strands or by bus or to the Ascom, Ascom Bryan College for a concert in the evening. And yet, when you see the joy on the face of the old lady, when she sees the Lord Mayor and Civic Party entering the room in their robes and is given her a hundredth birth, birthday card, or the great excitement of the Down syndrome child, when the Lady Mayoress tells him that he has just sung beautifully, there is nothing to replace this. And it's so important, I think, for York and for all the people who live here. But also, it's the loss of the robes and the chains. These symbolise the cultural and historic role of the Lord Mayor and the Civic Party. And their loss diminishes that role and diminishes the city. I was recently present at Lord Derrimore's school when the Lord Mayor and Civic Party came to see the Year 4's um, um, models that they had built. They lined the, the drive, they standing there with their flags waving as the Lord Mayor's car came in. The headmaster had, sorry, head teacher, had was playing Royal Britannia. That was so important for those children. They felt as though they were being visited by royalty. I'm also chair of the York Civic Trust Education Committee. And our aim is to make the young people of York aware of the culture and history of their city. One of the things we do for that is to have two public speaking competitions, one for primary schools and one for secondary. All the secondary schools take place, take part. We give them uh, topics which are related to York. I think the best one last year was Harry Potter has ruined the shambles, um, but also who should have a, a statue in York. Um, and it is the presence of the Lord Mayor and the Civic Party in their robes, which helped to make those evenings. Afterwards, the children say how important it was to be in the Merchant Adventurers Hall with the Civic Party present. I've heard them say on Radio York the next day, yes, when they're asked if they were feeling nervous. Yes, I did feel nervous, particularly because the Lord Mayor and Civic Party were there. That's your three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure some of the points that you've raised will be addressed by officers when they speak. I hope so. um, our next speaker, our final speaker is Dave Taylor. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Leader. You know you have three minutes. I can do without the warning, I'm sure. Marvellous. Off you go. Thank you. Uh, firstly, may I sympathise with the uh, Council on the financial position after years of governmental austerity. However, these proposals are misguided and I think they will harm the city's reputation and our sense of civic pride. I also believe them to be financially detrimental. 
I'm therefore going to ask you to defer the decision in order to take further soundings and advice before taking these steps. It can cost a great deal to be Lord Mayor. I had to give up my job for a year as I was busy seven days a week on mayoral business, occasionally attending five events in a day. I could afford to do that as I have no mortgage, no rent to pay, no children to support. Not everyone is in such a situation and I fear these proposals will return us to medieval times when only wealthy individuals can afford to be the Lord Mayor. Another unintended consequence is the likelihood of a slump in the sums raised for charity if the Lord Mayor is no longer permitted to select their charities for the year. Fundraising does not happen in a vacuum. In a vacuum. I chose four charities and their representatives worked hard all year organising events, engaging their supporters to raise money. We raised over £50,000. And I'm sure if I'd had access to the mansion house in my year, we'd have raised more money. But the vital point is, if there are no chosen charities and no hard-working representatives to organise events and no committed volunteers to attend them, then there'd be no money raised. The general public could easily perceive that the council has lifted the money from the Lord Mayor's charities to cover holes in the council budget. And if people do see this as a, a new form of tax, they're not going to contribute. You may easily lose more money for charity than you are seeking to save from these miserable cuts. Now, I could go on at length about how valuable the roles of the Lord Mayor and the Civic Party are in terms of the city standing in this country and in promoting York internationally for tourism, business, education and culture, as well as building relationships in Nanjing and Munster, uh, etc. The Lord Mayor reaches out to all parts of the community, as we've heard, opening events, visiting schools, elderly people's homes, welcoming new businesses, welcoming new British citizens, and attending religious, military, mercantile events. However, I really wanted to point out those financial elements, that the roles are tremendously underfunded already, and that the proposals, in my view, they're likely to lose more money than they will save. So please defer this decision, take further soundings and advice. Thank you very much, Dave. And uh, I reiterate again, the Lord Mayor and the Civic Party will continue to be able to choose which charities receive the funds that they raise during their year of office. It's clear in the report that that, that is um, the case. And, and I think there maybe has been some misunderstanding from some of the speakers here today um, about what will happen. We are merely providing a vehicle for the money um, which is separate, completely separate from the council, um, so that there is transparency over what happens with money that is raised. It seems um, like I'm not. Sure, perhaps the I'm sure that can explain. officers will will um, give further um, comment to that. I thank all our public speakers. Um, it's been really great to hear from you all, um, and, and really important that we do hear from people their views um, about decisions that are being made. I'm going to now pass over to Pauline to present the report and hopefully, Pauline, you'll be able to address some of those comments. Um, I think it's also um, important that we recognise that we had a number of written submissions, which we have um, carefully read um, and, and which I think Pauline is also going to address the main points of um, in, in her presentation. So over to you, Pauline. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for all the comments um, today and in written form. <clears throat> Can I just um, point out before we start, there is an error in the report at paragraph 40. The Lord Mayor's uh, special responsibility allowance is 3,384, not 4,960. This does not affect the recommendations in the report, so apologies for that. Um, as you can see, this report reviews a, a range of current civic, civic protocols to ensure that the Civic Party, including use of the Mansion House and Lord Mayor's Charities, are supported into the future in a sustainable way at, at a time of constrained resources. Importantly, the review will ensure the Lord Mayor can continue to act as an ambassador to, for the city as its first citizen. Um, and the council reiterates its support for a strong Lord Mayor and Civic Party fulfilling um, their roles, 
reflecting the historical significance and value of the civic function and its role in the life of the city. This commitment sits alongside the proposed significant investment to ensure critical repairs are undertaken at the Mansion House, which is the ancestral um, base of the York's Lord Mayorality and which will re remain the seat of the Civic Party into the future. So um, just in, in summary, what the report um, does do, it, it brings in controls to manage the current demand-led pressures, which um, brought uh, and created budget pressures in the past that the council can no longer afford, particularly around um, events. It brings clarity to protocols which have been unwritten rules, uh, which then could be interpreted in different ways, particularly around the use of transport, um, and importantly, provides clarity for decision making. It brings consistency and support um, around the Lord Mayor's charities. Uh, it re reduces costs and achieve, achieves potential budget savings. Um, and, and importantly, um, the core of the changes are to reduce costs of allowances, transport and security by reducing the number of events. Um, I just want to make um, the point about how much is spent on the Civic Party uh, and the budget this financial year is 134,000 in total compared to um, just over 100,000 in the past as we added more support in for the Civic Office. So this reduction brings it down to 124,000, uh, which, which is still 20,000 more than we've had in, in previous years. Um, just responding to particularly some of the written uh, comments, the, the report does not cover the following and no decisions will be made about sale of the mansion house, sale of chains, sale of the car or the number plate DM1, and it doesn't uh, uh, cover the reduction in civic roles. This is about processes and decision making, not about the civic roles. It doesn't stop the Lord Mayor uh, having their own charities. Uh, event management will still rest with the Civic Party and there'll be no di diversion to for public funds, but I'll come back to that in a bit more detail. Um, it does not stop visits to the local community groups, charities, schools and faith groups, and it doesn't force the Civic Party to use tr uh, public transport or affect the proposed significant capital investment in the house. In fact, it ensures the civic office and the mansion house can continue when local government elsewhere cannot afford to invest in civic heritage and civic culture. It secures a clear and important role for local civic duties. It avoids duplication with the incoming elected combined authority mayor. It allows the council to see the civic role through the lens of the core commitments of the council around equalities, affordability, culture, um, sorry, climate change and health. Uh, and the pr protocols will be reviewed each year in that vein, along with the, the serving civic party. I just want to um, respond to a number of the um, points raised if I can today. Um, I want to stress that reasonable adjustments will be made without question to remove barriers for any individuals. This will be very individual to a person's needs. Uh, for, for the individual role holders. Uh, and that's why we've not been able to go into detail in, in, in an equalities impact assessment because that will be assessed for each person as they come into their role. The proposals will be tested by the incoming civic party and, and reasonable adjustments made as indicated in the report, for example, where public transport might be used. Taxis and DM1 are still an option for all trips. Um, in terms of um, affordability, um, expenses will still be available and other civic budgets for, uh, are available for those adjustments and, and costs. And the Lord Mayor's um, SRA, um, uh, um, their allowance for being Lord Mayor is, remains unaffected. We've not made any proposals to reduce that. Um, where there are risks to personal safety, and I have to um, stress that the um, security that's given um, to events is to protect the regalia, but I absolutely acknowledge that that gives um, a feeling of security for the civic party. However, 
where there is a risk to personal safety, we will always undertake a risk assessment and always consult with the police where there are significant risks. So if I can just come to the, um, the, the, the use of the York Community Fund, um, the current and last Lord Mayors used the Two Ridings uh, Community Foundation to hold and distribute funding for the chosen Lord Mayors charity. The York Community Fund is a new partnership between the council and two ridings and all the relevant controls and charity commission status uh, remains unaffected. The money, I can absolutely guarantee, will be donated from York residents for York's charities uh, and the community and voluntary sector. That will not change. Um, and uh, there will be no conduit to feed into uh, council budgets in any way, shape or form. Uh, those don't have to be registered charities, um, and many community groups aren't registered charities. The Lord Mayor can continue to choose their own charities each year, as, as the current Lord Mayor has and the previous Lord Mayor, um, or allow the community fund to allocate its funding to its chosen priorities, which are set in line uh, with the council's core commitments. You would expect that, but that does not mean that that money will be diverted to council services. That's not what that's about. This is simply regularising what has been happening informally uh, in recent history, securing funds for local residents. It, it provides a mechanism for collection and distribution uh, through its grants process. The events management uh, and involvement of community groups will continue as it always had. Uh, the York Community Fund will support and promote the Lord Mayor's charities. Um, if the fund's own campaigns are chosen, the Lord Mayor will be promoted and linked to them uh, in all promotional material. So I hope that helps with clarity um, around that issue. And so you've, we've had um, public speaking and we, we can't allow any more. Please carry on, Pauline. In terms of um, decision making and the uh, matter around whether this is a, a key decision, um, I can confirm uh, that the Council's monitoring officer was consulted and in providing advice in relation to the non-key decision uh, status of the decision, he confirms he had regard to the contents of paragraphs 3.1 and 3.2 of Article 7 of the Constitution, in that it is not a decision which appears to him to have a significant impact on two or more electoral wards. In that context, it did not appear likely to result in or attract substantial public interest. Um, I'd be grateful if, if people in the public gallery could keep the noise down because I certainly want to listen to what officers have to say before making a decision um, and, and they are responding to the points that were raised by people who spoke in public. And I think we should respect that. So I'd be grateful if you just keep the noise down. Thank you. Uh, my final point, if I can make it before coming to the recommendations, uh, is to confirm that there is a cost associated with officers' time to manage the donations and accounts now. Um, the York Community Fund can gift aid donations from which administration costs can be made, and you would expect that of a charity. Um, so that, that is absolutely the case. Um, so if I can bring your attention... Um, Councillors, to um, the recommendations on agenda page five, paragraph 12, you will, I'm not going to read through all of them, but you can see that the recommendations are extracted from the body of the report and cover all of the areas that um, are cited for change um, in uh, paragraph number uh, 12a. Um, you are um, you are asked also to support the review and publication of the civic protocols on the council's website by the, by the 1st of May this year, and we'll make sure that that happens um, uh, on this occasion. Um, and uh, to take a future report to executive, which will seek to provide options to ensure the financial security of the mansion house in public partnership and the financial and climate change benefits to your other civic assets are, are maximised. Um, going forward. So uh, that's my comments completed. I don't know if Richard wants to add anything. No. Thank, you. Thank you. We may need you to um, help Richard with some of the answers to questions that we have. Um, Councillor Douglas, do you have any questions? Yeah, um, 
please could you outline for us why it isn't the fact that the Lord Mayor has been able to use the um, mansion house as a residence recently and what the current status of that is? Thank you. Well, I suppose there's two stages to 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 that question. Um, since 2018, since the refurbishment of the house, it has been uh, a requirement of the lottery grant funding um, for the house to be open to the public five days a week. Um, so it cannot be a traditional residence in um, in the traditional terms. In, in terms of that, the council pays business rates for the majority of the house and uh, council tax for the apartment. So I think it's important to say that the, the mansion house as a whole is not the residence in traditional terms, in terms of living quarters. Uh, however, it is absolutely the home of the civic party to undertake events and civic duties, and that continues today. The uh, recent um, issue um, is around the uh, safety um, of the accommodation whilst um, the lift is out of action. Um, that will hopefully be, uh, be addressed if the capital budget is approved tomorrow um, to undertake repairs for that um, for that problem. During the, the, whilst the lift is repaired, it is unsafe to live in that accommodation and sleep in that accommodation. Um, and the experts that we consulted on that included the council's health and safety team and the specialist fire officer and also the fire and rescue service. Whilst they were there, they also confirmed that the traditional uh, fire escape in through the roof uh, was no longer um, appropriate. And therefore, even if people were sleeping overnight, even if you could escape, um, if, if you could um, use the lift, if ever, all the repairs were done, um, if the fire was coming up the stairs, then um, there, there'd be significant difficulties because the fire escape is no longer usable on the roof. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I'd just like to add that when we were discussing this with the fire authority and, and since Grenville, they've tightened up on their um, specifications and what they expect to see. And, and, and it was their advice that the lift cannot be used um, from the apartments in an emergency. Thank you. Any other questions, Councillor Douglas? No, I think that's... Uh... No, thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, some of the public speakers mentioned, and, and certainly in the representations, it was written representations, it was also mentioned about the use of the badge of office. And I think one of the public speakers described it as one pound coin sized. Um, I think badge is a is a probably an inappropriate word, really, because it makes me think of a pin badge. Um, but Councillor Oral helpfully pulled out his badge of office, significantly bigger than a one pound coin size, um, mounted on a ribbon as a medal. So I think um, it would be helpful to understand, is that what all of the civic party get? Is it um, a pin badge that goes on your lapel? What does it look like? And Richard, I think you're probably the best place to answer that. The badge that Councillor Oral is, is showing is the badge that they receive at the end of their mayoral year or cheval of the year. That is not the size of the badge that we would propose is given to a lot of men. It would be bigger, it'd be more ornate, and it would certainly take imagery of the mayoralty, probably from the mansion house, to show that this is a lot of mayor, this is a sheriff and, and consort and so forth. But it would certainly be bigger than that, probably on the ribbon, but the details are yet to be agreed. Thank you. I think that's helpful. Um, so it's certainly the current badge that's given is 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 much more than a badge in in my inexperienced um, uh, opinion. Um, the I wanted to just touch on a question about the budget. So you said, Pauline, that the current um, total budget for the civic office is one hundred and thirty four thousand pounds for this year. So a £10,000 is then a 7% reduction in the budget. So, because uh, I know one of the public speakers suggested it was a 20 to 50% reduction, but that appears not to be the case. So I think 7% reduction, am I correct in that? Yeah. 
So a 7% reduction, not a 20 to 50% reduction. Um, I also wanted to ask, um, in the annex where it lists the kind of um, formal events that are attended, I, re I appreciate there are many, many more um, less formal events, um, but there's a number of attendances at, at York races. Um, is that a formal civic event where the Lord Mayor is representing the city? When the Lord Mayor attends, it, 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 it's a bit of both. Sometimes it's personal, it's personal guests, and sometimes it's visitors to the city as well. So it, there is a, really a mixture throughout the years. Because um, I think that's in contradiction to what some of the um, public speakers said when they said that they're always um, representing the city and, and they don't have any um, uh, more personal events. Um, can you explain the difference between the special responsibility allowance for the Lord Mayor and the Lord Mayor's allowance? Uh, the special, sorry, chair. The special responsibility allowance is given uh, for the role of um, chair of full council, uh, and the allowances relate to um, being able to support um, the Lord Mayor in their civic duties. So that might be, for example, supporting a charity event, um, putting on um, a, an afternoon tea, for example. Uh, there might be incidental costs that they need to fund. Um, do you have any more examples, Richard? Um, can you just confirm, Pauline, um, there was some suggestion that any fundraising the Lord Mayor might do would be channelled to the Hungry Minds campaign, which is the campaign to fund free school meals. Is that correct? It is uh, the campaign to fund free school meals. It is a campaign of the York Community Fund. Um, but uh, the choice is the Lord Mayor's. So if the Lord Mayor, next Lord Mayor chose to use that campaign as their charity focus for the year, then the funding will be channeled into it. If they chose three other uh, options that or campaigns that the York Community Fund are running, um, that's where the money will be channeled. Uh, into grant giving for that purpose. But just for York Hungry Minds, that would go to direct to schools. Um, uh, the third option is that the Lord Mayor selects their own charities, which the uh, York Community Foundation uh, Fund will work with them, two ridings will work with them to establish the collection for those charities and then the grant giving as a result of uh, uh, as a result of that. So there are three options, really. But yes, they could give to the York Hungry Minds. They could give to three to two options that are put forward by the York Community Fund, or they can select their own charities. So, for example, um, Philippa spoke during public participation on behalf of the Wilberforce Trust, and, and a Lord Mayor could choose the Wilberforce Trust, and they would receive charitable donations from the Lord Mayor. Yes. Thank you. That's really helpful. Any further questions, Councillor Douglas? Um, Councillor Douglas, is there anything else you want to note or say? Yeah, I, I'd just like to, um, again, as Katie did, Councillor Lomas did earlier, thank you all for attending today. And I would like to reiterate the absolute importance of this role of the Civic Party, the Lord Mayor to the city. There is absolutely no uh, change to that. Um, there is no question that they are the first citizen of York and hold a very important uh, historical position for us as residents, but also for the rest of the country. There is no undermining of that at all. But I do need to stress to you all that, as was raised by um, Dave Taylor, the austerity does mean that this year there is a £14 million gap in the funding to the council. Um, if the 2010 budget had increased just by inflation, we would have about 35 million pounds a year more than we currently have. And we estimate that with uh, the demands of an aging population and demand on our services and the complexity of services that we need to offer, 
that that um, gap is now £40 million a year. So I think that you can see that this just doesn't add up, does it? And as I have said to the city many times over the past 10 months, that unfortunately there is no element of the city that is not affected by this. There is no resident that is not affected and there is no service that is not affected. And to think that we don't need to take action on that is financial irresponsibility. And I will not preside over that. So I just want to set that scene for you as to why we are asking for the civic party to also um, participate in that. And really the main reduction in the funding is for the Lord Mayor's allowance, which can be used for clothes and for entertainment as well. And I think if you asked the city where they would like to see their money going at the moment, it would be towards adult social care and children's services or public health. And I have to agree. So I please do ask you to be considerate of that. And also to note that um, this is a change to how things have worked in the past. And as staff have found in the past that um, because there hasn't been anything written down. It's been quite hard to have conversations at times when resources are limited or staff capacity is limited about what can be achieved within the civic year. This helps them to do their job and also gives a focus, as Janet uh, Looker pointed out, to the role of the, the mayor. So we hope that that will make the role a bit easier for everybody to carry out, but it will be assessed every year. We will keep an eye on it, how it works. Do changes need to be made? Of course we will. So that is uh, the, the profile and the, the horizon that we're looking out into. And I just hope that all of you can appreciate that it is hard times. Everybody's feeling it. And um, yeah, I, I can't really say much more about that. So thank you everybody for coming today. Thank you, Councillor Douglas. Um, I want to echo that thanks to everyone for everything you have done and continue to do for our city. And that includes the people who took the time to send written representations to us, um, which I assure you everything that you have written or said to us has been taken into consideration. I'm very proud um, of, of our city's history and I'm very proud um, of our civic party and the fact that we maintain one of the oldest civic offices in the country. Um, and my absolute intention is to continue to do that. £134,000 is an enormous sum of money um, for the council to spend at a time where we are having to make such cruel and awful cuts um, because of austerity, as, as Dave kindly pointed out earlier. Um, and I think it's a modest reduction of 7% in that budget while still supporting the civic office to do their wonderful work in the communities. And I know from the consultation that we've had with the incoming civic party that they're absolutely enthusiastic and ambitious to focus ever more on community events and activities during their year of office. I therefore accept the recommendations in the report and I look forward to seeing how the roles um, develop and devolve as they inevitably will do, as they have over time since the Lord Mayor first came into being. Um, and um, I very much look forward to reviewing this in a year to see how it's gone, to see how we can further provide support and structure to the Civic Party during their year of office and make sure that we maintain the historic civic office of the city of York. Um, we then move on to our final item and there being no urgent business, um, this meeting is closed. Thank you very much everyone for your participation.